Good morning, Pedal Nerds. Mmm, coffee. So, I've had um, this video up for about a year now, a little bit longer, called Pedal Pricing Demystified. Check it out if you want to know the whole deal. It's about an hour long. I sat down for 20 minutes, turned out an hour. Well, that's me. Um, hey, how cool is this crap? It's not. So, the point is... Um, I think someone from Exotic saw the video and thought that my point of the video, I think they only saw a snippet, may maybe, I don't know, but um, I think they uh, thought that my point was that their pedals are too expensive and you can get the same sound or quality from another company. And you know what? The same sound? Well, that's really all completely subjective. Yes, I can get a 30 euro china pedal that sounds like a tube screamer. I can get a 250 or something exotic pedal that doesn't sound like a tube screamer, but that has a distorted sound that I might or might not like. So the price of a pedal is not a guarantee for it being pleasing to your ears, which was kind of my point. My point was also to il illustrate what's going on right now with a lot of the things coming directly from China. That was the whole idea of showing you why this is 30 bucks. The reason that it's 30 bucks is, let me tell you again, because oftentimes it is being bought in bulk, direct. So meaning in uh, the, the case of these Harley Benton pedals, which is, this is a Joyo, but Companies that buy and sell direct, like Toman in this case does, they buy in huge bulk directly from the factory, therefore eliminating the distributor, maybe even the company. And um, let's let's just take Ibanez for example. Ibanez uh, has guitars built in Indonesia, in um, Vietnam, and all these places. But these factories, they get their money for it. So Ibanez buys a guitar from them. They make an Ibanez guitar. They make a lot, so they get a good deal. But that company is being paid for the wood, for the parts, and for the labor. And then Ibanez has the guitar. Well, they want to make some money, so they add. Then it goes to the distributor, in this case here, Meinl in Germany. And then Meinl wants to make some money, and Thoman wants to make some money, or Music Store wants to make some money, the local store wants to make some money. So there's three people that want to make money. But why don't you just buy the guitar in Vietnam? Exactly. Exactly. Well, what if something happens with the guitar? Well, who do you call? Who are you going to call? Ghost Vietnam people. No, no one. Um, what if... Um, who's going to help you set it up? How do you even know about the guitar? Well, Ibanez, yes, they have a Facebook site and they have a, um, a website, but... All the local stuff that introduces you to the guitar, shows you, puts it in endorser hands, puts ads in magazines, that is done by the distributor locally here. So, should they not make money? Well, obviously shipping it in big crates, which makes it cheaper for you than buying it directly from Vietnam. Try to get a guitar from Vietnam or Indonesia or wherever. This is just an, an example. So... Ibanez gets it here relatively cheap. Try to get, for example, Kiesel. Kiesel makes great guitars, but you have to import them from the US. Shipping is about 100 bucks. Hell yeah. So not in a big crate. No, individually. And then you have to pay the customs on it. Uh, it, it it's going to add up. And then this really ex extremely nicely looking price that you saw before isn't nice anymore. So the point is, all these people in between, they do their jobs. I can call mine and say, hey, I, I, I can't, I just did that actually last week. I have a problem setting up my Floyd Rose on my gem. Can you help me? And yes, there's someone on the phone that can help me, which is great. Now let's talk about pedals. Let's go back to this exotic thing. Is there really highly more sophisticated electronics in here? Well, likely the transistors and comprenders and pondonants. I don't know what's in here. Wires and shit are of higher quality, but not in the magnitude of the price of this pedal. But the point is, the reason why you want and why you can buy this pedal in your country is the distributor, okay? Because I'm going to spin a story here, totally 
absolutely not based on any real story. There are 15 people at Exotic. Some of these companies are rather small. I know Walrus is relatively small. Some of these companies are three people, maybe one. Uh, I know um, uh, VFE Pedals is one guy, okay? So um, let's say there's 15 people in this company. They have no way of knowing your local store, Harry's Guitar Shop, um, and how to contact them, how to get the pedal into the store. Let's say they did that. Let's say they knew Harry's Guitar Shop around the corner. And Exotic, those 15 people said, okay, well, one of you is not building pedals anymore. One of you is dealing with international sales for the whole world, and you deal with Harry's Guitar Shop by yourself. Well, they can't do that because that is simply too much work for one person. But let's say he does that. Let's say that even works. So, so Joe Bob is working with Harry's Guitar Shop and about 100,000 other shops around the world and sells you this AC Plus booster. AC Plus, there's no booster. <laughs> Whatever. Um, directly. Well, how do you hear about it? How, how? How? Well, okay, you can go and buy this pedal at Harry's Guitar Shop if you see it there in display, which is already a good start. And what, what if something breaks? Well, okay, Harry's Guitar Shop might tell you you're within a certain time period and I'll replace it for you. Then they have to ship it back to Exotic. And that back and forth, it, it doesn't make sense. So Harry's Guitar Shop, only dealing directly with the manufacturer, might not be inclined to take these pedals into their lineup because it's not cost effective to ship it back and forth in case they have to take care of the warranty. But will Harry's Guitar Shop take out advertising? You know, like when I click on here in Germany, Bonedo or one of these websites that do uh, reviews, there's ads propping up. Well, these ads can be annoying, but these ads also tell you, oh, there's a new product. So ads are not just business, business, business. They inform you that there's new shit out there. What I do is a form of advertising. I mean, it's honest advertising and I bitch about stuff, but it informs you that there's new shit out there. So Harry's Guitar Shop as small as Harry is, is not going to take out major advertising to inform the people in his country, you know, Guatemala, I don't know, that there are new exotic pedals. So how do you even hear about it? How do you even know to go down to Harry's? Exactly. Advertising is important. Not just for the company, but for you as a consumer to know that there is shit. Which means we need someone in between. Because if Harry now goes to the uh, Guatemalan Guitar Player magazine and says, hey, I want to take out an ad, they're going to charge him a shitload because it's like one ad that he takes out. If you have a distributor who has Exotic, Digitech, I don't know, Strymon, all these companies, okay? If you have a distributor that has a lot of companies, they take out more ads. If they take out more ads it reduces the price for the ad. It's that, it's that simple. Which means less overhead, which means more savings on the actual product. But we need the ads. With the purchase of this, with the purchase of this, whatever, you also pay for the ad. You also pay for the guy on the phone giving you tech support. Uh, you also pay for uh, the shipping, the handling. You pay for, oh, in the end, you got to pay for everything. Because they, they try to make money. So everything's got to come in through the price of the product. And it, it, that's extremely important. It's extremely important that everything's been taken care of so the product can land in the store where you can go, where you can check it out, and actually buy it. Pedals, you might end up buying online, maybe uh, something more expensive. I want to check out in the store. I don't want to buy this on goodwill and because I said in a video, this is great. No, you want to go and check it out. You want to make a day out of it, you know, with your buddy, then go to McDonald's, hang out. I mean, that's what we do. We go to the stores and check out shit. So this needs to be available in the store and only distributor can do that. What about an amp? Okay. Um, an amp is extremely important to check out in a store because you can't possibly 
watch a video of mine and say, hey, the amp sounds good. I'm going to drop 1500 bucks on this amp. No, 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 no. My video will inform you that it's kind of cool. You get my opinion, but then please go and check it out in the store for yourself. For that, you need a distributor to put it there. So saying, well, I'm paying all this money to a distributor. Well, that's a good idea because they are also responsible if something on the amp isn't okay. Because then you go to the distributor and they give you the service. They have someone on the phone picking up saying, hey, what's up? Oh, yeah, it's awesome. Oh, man, the tube blew. Damn it, well, let me get uh, right on that. I'll check it out and you get a new one or replacement or whatever. Let Let me send you an RMA number, whatever they do. So, yes, some of the money that you spend on this goes to not what's in the pedal, not the research that has been done for the pedal, but it goes into the people enabling you to buy it, the people letting you know that it's out there, and the people getting great shipping rates to because they buy 500 of these in a big crate. Okay, all these things are happening kind of silently in the background, and that's why we sit there and say, what the fuck, why is this so expensive? On the other hand... What the fuck? Why is this so cheap? Killer pedal, by the way. Um, but, yeah, it's, it might be relatively inexpensive to produce the drop. It's 110 bucks right now, and everyone's still making their money. Good for you. But at least you know about it, because someone's done their job. A distributor has put an ad in a magazine. A distributor is on the phone being able to answer your questions if something doesn't work. Or also maybe the uh, the, the company. Hey, l- l- check this out. Strymon! Um, Music Psych in England is, or Britain or wherever, they're the, they're the distributor. Well, their territory is Europe, and their territory partially is Germany. So the distributor paid me to have the manuals translated into German. You could say, well, why doesn't the company do that? Well, the company may be partially paid. Maybe the company pitched in. But the distributor was responsible for the German manuals because it's his territory. Which means we in Germany, mir Deutschen, we have German manuals available for all the Strymon products because I sat there painstakingly translating them, but I also got something for it from the distributor. So, yes, you want to make sure that the distributor is adequately paid for adding all these valuable um, services. Okay, now, China pedals again. (laughs) This is Moval. Moval came out and this is a company, you know, selling direct, no distributor in between. Great pedals. Good value for about 60, 70 bucks. I think Moval is gone. Toman had them. They're being sold out now. They're gone. Why? Well, not the best distributor network. They were doing direct sales. Some companies are doing that now. Direct from the factory to the big stores means no little store has it. Harry's Music around the corner will not have these or didn't have these. These companies are come and go. Uh, they fought with their engineer the engineer went and did his own company called tone city made his own pedals exactly the same pedals different color different names bam if one of these breaks what happens who are you gonna call ghostbusters no um having a company and a distributor network and all these people that that are there for you it's it's crucial and I'm not kidding you. It hurts a little bit to think I'm not just paying for the box, the knob, and the guy who built it, and the guy who programmed it, but I'm paying for people to technically shove it through, but the distributor's doing more than that. I've been to a few distributors. Let's take my friend Mario, for example. Mario is working for a distributor. He travels all across Germany and Switzerland and Austria. Two stores, places, pedals there. I think it's Boris Audio. Um, actually, I know it's Boris Audio. Ha. Um, but there's someone on the ground with the car spending gas, making sure that those stores check out the pedals so that they have them in stock for you. Um, 
this person needs to be paid. The gas needs to be paid. And he's working his fucking ass off to bring you those products. Why shouldn't he get paid? Okay, so no, they're not just shoving it through. It's not just a storage. I'm sorry. It's kind of some what I thought. But now that I look more behind the scenes and behind the curtain, I see that there's a lot more to a distributor. It's a distributor than just a warehouse where they have boxes that they then just send on. Advertising, marketing, websites, events. Um, Albanus had just the Albanus Guitar Festival, a big festival where they put on. Um, put on artists and all this and that has been done by Meinl Meinl the distributor puts up a huge festival uh, to let you know about Albanus and bring you Steve Vai and all these guys so yes it, it all flows into the pricing structure so if anyone which I really hope not misunderstood my pedal pricing demystified video um, in the end if you're cool with buying a pedal direct from Alibaba, AliExpress, TomTom, whatever, direct from China, which I absolutely not recommend because it fucks up your stores in your country. It fucks up a distribution network. It fucks up a lot of people that want to, not want to, it fucks up a lot of people that actually make money. People like you and me, which we should support. Okay. And yes, I work for Joyo. I'm being paid by Joyo. And my main goal is it to have good distributors for Joyo so that this is not 30 bucks, so that it's 50 or 60, so that a distributor and a store can make some money, but also have a service to you. That's important for me. For me, I want, I don't want this direct from China crap. And if you are a Joyo buyer, if you're in the market for a Joyo product, please don't buy it direct from China. Why? What if, what if it breaks? Who are you gonna call? Ghostbusters? No. Joke's getting lame. No, please find a local local online store, uh, find a local dealer and buy it from them. Even if it's more money, please spend the extra couple of bucks because you're supporting that network. This whole direct thing is, it's hurting the business. And uh, the more companies do this, the more we support it. Hey, Congo. The more we support it, the more companies will say, well, to compete with the pricing, that's what we have to do. I think Fender is doing it. Um, PRS started doing it. I know they have, uh, they don't have distributors anymore. They have their own uh, offices in England and then just do distribution from there. Did the PRS guitars get cheaper? No, they didn't. So more money flows to PRS instead of the middle people. And I think they're doing an okay job there with the advertising they're just doing it all themselves but some companies don't have the size to have their own local distribution or their own local uh, thing set up so buy locally buy at least in your country don't order shit directly from china again these guys brought you manuals if you're in germany that's a good thing these things are complicated and um again i want to apologize to exotic if it in any way came across as if i'm not valuing the quality of the pedals, most certainly valuing the branding that you did. Because please, guys, I'm sorry, uh, please, recognize that Exotic built relationships with guitar players, flies them in to hang out with them and do videos for you, uh, goes to them at shows and says, hey, Andy, I want to, we have this pedal, want to check it out? And, and building relationships with these people that we love, and those people bring us these pedals and say, hey, check this out. It's worth something. Okay? How many Chinese companies have great artists? It's not about the sound. It's about the money and the time and the effort being spent on establishing relationships with artists um, and with other businesses around the world. And that time is absolutely worth our added investment in the products. I, I can't say it any other way. I'm done preaching to the choir here. Um, buy locally, if you can, please, if it's available. If not, instead of just buying something like this from China, why don't you go to your local store and say, well, you don't have this brand? Why don't you have this brand? Well, go to the distributor and please order it. Or could you maybe put some pressure on some of the distributors you know to actually import this? 
still can't get these in, in Germany through any local stores. So, uh, or you couldn't get these. Now the company, I think, is gone. Maybe. I don't know what's going on. So please, if you're interested in something from China, it would be a good idea to ask your local store, order some. Because then at least you have that store as a, as, a, as a barrier between you and the Chinese or whatever country the stuff's coming from. The more you request it, the more distributors will listen and the more distributors will be interested in that product. Happy Sunday, guys. <laughs>